Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another month's edition of Saturday Soul with the Liberation Movement. I am your host for today, Chelsea Burrows, and I am so excited to be able to have two lovely ladies that will be a part of the conversation with us today in the women's edition, um, Spill the Tea. So without further, further ado, um, I will introduce the two lovely ladies, um, Aunt Janice, Janice Vanderhorst, and my mother, Joanne Burrows. Hi. Hi, Chelsea. <laughs> so Hi, good to have you guys. Thank you. So um, just to keep in mind, those who are going to be um, participating, um, these are wonderful women. They're women of God, um, women that I had the benefit of being able to grow up with. So we're hearing from, you know, women who've experienced very many things. Just um, it's going to be exciting to be able to kind of hear from their experiences. Um, keep in mind that next month, July 31st, we will be having um, the first Black legislator in the state of Idaho that will be taking part, um, Senator um, uh, Sheree Buckner Webb. So keep in mind that next month, same time, the 31st of July, we will be there again. So let's get started, ladies. Thank you so much for coming. This is really like the conversations that we have um, after Sabbath lunch or after Sunday. Um, gatherings, just to be able to kind of talk about the things that we as women, specifically women of faith, women of color, um, kind of talk about. And so um, I'm excited to kind of see um, and hear more about um, our experiences and what all of those things have been like. So the first question we're kind of kind of dive into is who um, and how have Black women in your life, whether older or younger, um, helped you in your journey um, of life. So anyone can begin? Of course. <laughs> um, so there are so many women that I could, you know, um, name. Um, we, we could spend a whole afternoon talking about all the different women who have poured into my life um, that have taught me um, many things like working hard, how important it is to, to do your best. Um, sacrifice is a way to achieve some of the goals that you have. Um, uh, treating people uh, the way you wanna be treated. Um, treat them with dignity and respect and equity. Um, but I guess, I, I guess, I don't know, even my daughters who are young have taught me so, so much. Um, but I wanna, I wanna talk about two individuals. Um, one I know very, very well. And the other one um, I never met. Um, just read about her, saw movies about her. Um, and she, inspired me. She helped me to grow professionally. She was an educator in the Chicago public schools. I am an educator. I'm a teacher, a reading specialist. And very, very early in my uh, educational career, I heard about this woman who worked in Chicago public schools and was very, very disenchanted. Um, most of the children that she taught in the school system were black and brown. And she realized that they were not being educated in the proper way. Um, they were being neglected. The teachers were very apathetic. Um, she brought that to her coworkers and her administrators attention. They didn't want to hear it. They felt that these kids could not be educated. And so after a few years, she decided to seek some money from the government and start her own school, which was the West Side Preparatory School. And that woman was Marva Collins. Mm. And I think I first heard about her in my very first year of teaching while I was in Boston Public Schools. And I said, man, I would love to 
to talk to this woman, pick her brain, because just like her, I'm teaching in an inner city school system. And often I saw the, some of the same things that she talked about. Mm. Um, the children that she taught, she decided in her school at Westside Prep that she was going to raise the expectations, raise the standards, mm. teach them classical literature that, um, you know, she knew that they could handle and the children achieved. She started off with four children in her school and it expanded from there. And all the children that she taught um, did extremely well. Um, she helped me in my first year of teaching to develop my educational theory, which was and is all children can learn. Um, do they learn the same way? Nope. It takes an effort, extreme effort on the part of the educator to identify what it is that the children have strengths in, what their learning styles are, and to teach in that way. Mm. So Marva Collins is one woman. <laughs> the other one was my mom. She uh, and my dad migrated from Jamaica West Indies. Um, they didn't have much. They wanted to, they were seeking a better life. Um, and my mom taught me hard work pays off. Um, I think she had, she did have a high school diploma and I believe she went to college for one or two years. Um, but watching my mom as a child, seeing her work raise our family, keep the household together. She worked outside the home. She went back to school to become a licensed practical nurse and she learned to drive. My mom never knew how to drive until I was in high school. And um, she taught me that, um, you know, there's just some things that you have to put aside in order to reach your goals. Um, she would sacrifice her two week vacation to take my sister and I to camp meeting every year. It wouldn't be for her, it would be for us so that we could have different experiences. And um, with my mom for all that she has done for me. So she has really poured into me during my life's journey. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, my mother was awesome. She, uh, she, had a legacy, well, she died in 2011. So she left a legacy of service, caring for others and loving the way she loved my father so unashamedly mm -hmm. and so proudly and loudly. And um, so she was a great, great example for me. And the women in my church, they all, they all, we're always looking for stuff for us to do as youth, as young people in youth, whatever. They were always planning, always sacrificing, always giving up their time to make sure every child that wanted to go or wanted to be involved could be involved. And my mother was like the ringleader of that also. Uh, she was very, very, very interest, instrumental in me wanting to always be hanging out with Chelsea, with the youth, with you all trying to plan, trying to go, trying to make sure that you are enjoying your, your life as you have it. And then I would say the women in my neighborhood, there was a lady, I had a neighbor across the street and she, she would bring the young girls into her house and she would teach us ballet. Mm -hmm. It and she would teach us all the fine things of life, charm school etiquette type things. And I thought about that as I got older. She just she knew it, she learned it, and she wanted to pass that on to us. Mm -hmm. And so she she was a very she had a big influence on my life of wanting to always pass on and share whatever I can, what I know. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's it's so funny. I think there's a theme amongst uh, the ones that you've already shared. And I'm going to share as well, because it's interesting there. So the two women that it rolled well, three, uh, four, that immediately came to my mind <laughs> um, are obviously my mom, mommy, um, and um, my grandmother, my father's mother, who's, who passed, and um, my mother's mother. I, I remember 
and uh, when I had back surgery that um, Grammy took care of me. Grammy was very, very instrumental. Like mommy said, she was a nurse and um, I was a teenager that did not want to have the surgery and she was there making sure that I was taken care of, making sure that the nurses who were taking care of me, that they didn't necessarily complain and they did what they needed to do to make sure that I was okay. But there was one thing that was outside of this situation that really stuck with me. That's something um, that my Grammy, Grammy Ruth um, said to me. Um, and it was um, her talking about her experience after my grandfather passed prior to my, my birth. Um, and I remember her saying that she didn't know how she was going to get by and make ends meet after her husband passed away. But the one thing that she said over and over again was God gave us this house and he's going to figure out a way for me to be able to keep it. And to this day, my 96 year old mother is a owner of that house. And she even has people who are helping her at this point. And just looking at her example in that way of like, we're not the ones who are the end all be in our, in our experience, but God is going to be the one to take care of us. That was just like, Oh, wow. Like, now being on the other side of things and being a homeowner myself, it's like, wow, like, no, that's definitely the truth. Mm -hmm. um, another um, thing that I can think of is when my mom, mommy, I don't know if you remember this, but when I was younger, I did not like staying home by myself at all. <laughs> and I remember it felt, um, I would just get so much um, like anxiety and get anxious about staying home by myself. And I remember mommy would always say, Chelsea, like, you need to trust God that he's going to take care of you and keep you safe. Like, you can't control everything, but you have to trust God. And I remember um, at one point, um, my mom and my sister had to leave the house and I was going to have to stay by myself. And I was like, at some point, I have to take these words to heart and I'm going to have to stay by myself. And I can definitely say that having taken those words to heart and, you know, <laughs> those are things that we I look at now and it's like, I have not been in a situation where my faith has failed when I've chosen to trust in God because of that example. Um, and I say the same thing with my, my father's mother, who's a strong woman in the faith, dealt with so many different things. And in spite of them losing parents at a very young age and having to do a whole lot, like her trust in God was just another level. And because of it, I am, I know who I am today. So I know it's just interesting to kind of see the themes, you know, of the women. Yes. You know? And I think Chelsea that, um, one of the biggest things, and I, I, I meant to mention it earlier, but something you said brought it back to my mind, was um, that my mother taught me was selflessness, mm -hmm. always doing for others, but not, she didn't do it neglecting herself. You know, sometimes we can get so involved in taking care of others that we forget ourselves, but she said an right. example. I want to take care of myself, but I'm also going to teach you to be selfless. And what she used to do um, things that I didn't understand when I was younger and didn't want to do them probably sometimes, but she sent me around when I was about eight or nine years old, sent me around the corner to a blind neighbor's house to read to her. I can't tell you what I read, but I read to her every Sunday. That was okay. But when my next door neighbor, her husband died tragically, it was just the two of them. They didn't have any children. And um, she was thought of in the neighborhood as, kind of strange, only because we as children didn't understand. I understand. Now she was uh, very religious and she wore the same like thing every day, a certain kind of sh dress and hat. And to us as kids, it looked like, you know, why is she wearing that every day? And, mm -hmm. But I read, I found out it wasn't the same dress every day, but the same kind and the same color, but that was just her, her denominational attire. Well, when her husband died, my mother said that I needed to go. She wanted me to go to her house every evening and sleep at her house for a week because she was very lonely and very sad. And I had to bite the bullet on that because I can only imagine what the kids in the neighborhood were going to say. And I could, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know about mm -hmm. that house. It was strange to me. Yeah. But my mother was teaching me to learn how to serve others. Of course, once I got, I would go after dinner and Miss Essie would make a little bed for me in her room. And I would lie there um, listening to her crying and praying out to God. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I cried and prayed out to God because I was scared. But <laughs> she was in grief. But yeah. as the days went on, we would have breakfast together. And it, I became a little more comfortable. Um, I was glad I did it. And I didn't know how much she appreciated it mm. 
until until I got married years later, what she volunteered to do for us. And my parents didn't ask for anything, but what she said, I have to do this. She said, what you all did when Janice was 12 to send her, that made such a difference. So she was teaching me from young to look out for others. And as a result, I, I have that desire to comfort people during bereavement or sickness or like whatever the need is. And then I have, if my, if I may, mm -hmm. or two more antidotes. Um, <laughs> my, um, <clears throat> my mother-in-law, my mother, Ronnie's mother, my husband's mother, she was a consummate hostess. She would have any visitor that came to their church in Youngstown, she would have them over for dinner. So that means she had to cook every week. <laughs> And she willingly did that. And there, we have met so many people who, when they find out the last name, well, I think we ate at a lady's name. She got remarried and her last name was Stanford. But we ate at a lady's house in Youngstown. Was that your mother-in-law? Was that your mother, Ronnie? And sure enough, it was. We've mm. met so many people. And she has, that was a ministry that I try to emulate as well. So both of those ladies teaching me service for all, service for others, mm -hmm. and then the last one is my mother again, back to my mother. I'm telling you, my parents were, we're talking about mothers, but it was both my parents, but my mother and father had a heart for couples. Mm. Um, and they were always encouraging and talking and dealing with couples any time of day, any time of night. And again, as a result of ministry that we started mm. right and I dealing with couples. And I never thought about those things like, oh, I'm going to do this when I get older, or I'm going to be like this. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that it started coming out and it was things that I admired that I knew that would make me a better person or help mm -hmm. me, you know, to, to be what Christ has created me to be if I, you know, emulate and live out these things. And so I'm very thankful for the um, patterns that these, those women in my life left for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really good. Like it's, it's interesting because like you were saying, and, and even mommy, like the things that we've seen in women who are prior and parents who are prior, like it kind of just, you just follow suit in doing some of the same things because you realize that the value that they have given you in those things and, and those actions and connecting and being a part of the community that, that, you know, that goes such a, a long way that, I mean, years later, we're still talking about some of those same things. So here's another question. What do you love most about being a black spiritual spirit led woman? What do you love most? <laughs> Okay, I'll go. Um, a black spiritual woman. I just love being black because I just think being black is just so, I think it's beautiful and colorful. And a black spiritual woman, um, I feel so much freedom. Mm. Um, and again, that goes back to I mean, everyone I realize don't, 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 they don't feel that freedom or realize that freedom until they're older. But I grew up knowing that being spiritual could be fun. Mm. It, it wasn't li limiting to me because of all the things that my parents had us do and, and had us involved in. They were all fun things. Um, we enjoyed them and they taught me that my relationship with Christ is personal and I did not have to try to compare or live up to a standard that someone else is setting for me. For mm -hmm. me, they search the word yourself and see. And I was always able to ask questions, always able to discuss. And as a result, um, my relationship, you know, that's the first person I turn to. They've taught me to turn to God. Mm -hmm. They turn, turn to God. And, um, and it was all, and because of the positive attitude that I have with my parents, I think, I, I think it's very easy for me to relate to God as a father and the Holy Spirit as a mother, or however, you know, I, I term, I choose to term them, with everything because I feel open. I don't feel anything is hidden from them, and mm -hmm. because that's how my relationship was with my parents, how they. So I, I, the spirit. I, I'm, and I'm learning more and more every day. It's getting better and better just, just to communicate with the spirit mm. and to, to not to, to live in the freedom that the spirit gives and mm. get to that place is sweet. Sweet. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. 
I would have to um, piggyback and, and agree with everything that, um, that Janice said. Um, I just, I feel that um, my relationship and my, uh, my relationship with God has really evolved over the years. Um, as a mother, I really enjoyed introducing you and your sister to um, God and, and prayed for you all to develop your own relationship uh, with him. And um, it, is, it is such a joy to see, um, you know, how you all have, have blossomed in that way. Um, not only have you developed your own relationship, but you have developed in such a way that you're sharing your love for God with, with others. Um, I remember when Amber was really young, um, she and I went uh, to went to meet, I think it was at the mall. We went to meet my sister at the mall. This is long before cell phones. And um, we were supposed to do something together once we got there. And Amber was really looking forward to um, this activity. And when we got there, I didn't see Yvonne where we were supposed to be, where, where we were supposed to meet. And I could tell that Amber was getting ready to get disappointed. And I didn't know if she was going to cry or what. But I said, you know what, Amber? Let's just pray. Let's mm -hmm. just pray that Aunt Yvonne will come really, really, really soon. And as we were praying, I was crying out to the Lord, please answer this prayer <laughs> really <laughs> fast because I want her to believe yes. in you. I want, mm -hmm. I, I, I want her to believe. Because I always used to tell you all, pray, even though you can't see Jesus, even mm -hmm. though you can't feel him, you know he's there. We try to get you all to understand that it's a, it's, it's a being, it's a spirit that you can't see, but you have to believe in, you have mm -hmm. to have faith. And I said, Lord, please answer this prayer. When we opened our eyes and I'm mm. saying, when we opened our eyes, Yvonne was walking around the corner and I said, Jesus, thank you so much. This I believe will do so much for the relationship that, uh, my children, my child will have for you. Um, I want them to know. I want them to see. I mean, not all the time is he going to answer your, your prayer right away. Sometimes he says no. Um, but, um, you know, I was, I was very thankful that day. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he sensed that, Joanne. He sensed yeah. the, the lesson you were trying to teach. Right. And, you know, and what you did also is, we, you were teaching them, Amber and Chelsea, and we, at, and I was teaching Portia and Shalisha that nothing is too minute mm. or mundane or earthly or anything that yes. they can ask for anything. Yes. Lord, help me find a parking space. Right. Lord, help me to get a good deal on these shoes that I want. <laughs> nothing is, you know, your relationship with him yeah. is just like your brother, your father, your friend, and that's how he wants us to come to him. And that's what you were doing. You ask him, you want to join Aunt Yvonne to hurry up or to yeah. get here. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, there, there, there are times when, <clears throat> well, I think about the fact that everyone in my sphere, <clears throat> everyone who I know, they know that I have a relationship with God. They know it. I don't go beat them over the head. I don't tell them. I don't talk about it. Um, you know, specifically. Uh, I think uh, like she's frozen. Yeah, they're frozen a little bit. Oh, okay. oh no, oh. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Maybe my coworkers have suffered a loss. And I'll say to them, I'm praying for you. They may be an atheist. Mm -hmm. They may be someone who doesn't believe. No, they may yeah. be someone who doesn't believe in, mm -hmm. in But they know that he's important to me. I believe in him. And I'm going to pray for you. Mm. Um, if we experience at work or wherever something that's joyous, I'll say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and it's not, it is not just a cliche. I am really praising God for, you know, what he has done for us. Or I'll say, Lord, help me, you know, if something is, is happening. Um, uh, I also, uh, it's important for me to let folks know, as I was, I mentioned before, that 
Um, I pray for them, um, whether they believe in prayer or not. I let folks know that I keep a prayer journal. And if someone tells me that they are, you know, they need it, they're in need of something, I will write it down in my prayer, prayer journal and I'll ask them, keep me updated, let me know. I like to go back to my journal and write down, was this prayer answered? Yes, no, whatever it is. Um, because it's, it's the example that I'm trying to follow in God's word is to, to, to do for others, yes. to be of service to others and to intercede for others. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want them to know that that is one way that I do it for, you know, for, for my friends. Mm. And they, they, they sense it. Like you said, when I, sometimes you're not even talking about it, they don't know. I remember prin my principal, I went in for an evaluation with him. And that's one of the things he said, your presence in this building gives us all peace. Mm -hmm. And I, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah. um, I think, Joanne, when you mentioned interceding for others, I think about a prayer that I've been praying lately. It's just going through lately, dissecting it and taking it piece by piece. And it's just simply the, what we call the Lord's prayer. But the portion in it that says, talks about thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when I stop there, I say, Lord, you have a will for Joanne's family today, mm -hmm. this day. Mm -hmm. You have a will for my neighbors this day. So please let your will be done in their life today. If it's anything I can do to help that, Please help me to hear it and respond. So interceding for others is 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 so key. Yeah. Spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so funny that you say that. Um, mommy, earlier when you were talking, I was thinking about the situation that I referred to earlier where I was afraid to stay at home. And you were saying there might be reasons to be afraid to stay at home, but you shouldn't have a reason to be afraid right now. And the rest of the story goes, I did have to stay home by myself that day. It was not enjoyable initially. And someone did come in the house. And the person who came in the house, even though I couldn't initially see them, I hid from. And I tried to attack them. It was my father. Was that the day so, you were hiding in the closet? It was when I was hiding in the closet. <laughs> it was when I was hiding in the closet and thought that someone was trying to break into our home. And mommy was like, there's no reason for you to be afraid. Like you don't have a reason right now in this moment to be afraid. And sure enough, it was my father who was, come on. And so it's just so funny that, you know, it's one thing to be able to hear these various things. And, you know, like looking back on the things that both of you have taught, you know, some of the young ladies and men from church and everything else, you know, we can hear those things, but once we internalize it, it means a totally different thing. It's, 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 it is within us, you know, it's our part of our experience now, rather than something that was told to us and that we can learn from, we actually experience at that point. And we say, oh no, this is, this is a part of me too. Not just something that was said from someone who's, um, who right. said something before. It's so funny. I was, um, I was uh, mowing the lawn this morning and um, that song by Marvin L. Winans and um, Donnie McClurkin, who would have thought I, I would get to know God this way? <laughs> I heard folks talk about it before, but I used to laugh. Yeah. But no, seriously, right. I, I have an experience now that I know that were because of the women who came before me praying about my experience and my existence before I even came to be. Mm, and so exactly. it's like we're living, we're living testimonies and we're living experiences based on those who came years, decades, centuries, prior to us knowing that we were going to go through things and they were going to, you know, we were going to have the Holy Spirit to be able to call upon. Like when God said, I'm going to go to heaven. Listen, the spirit is with each and every one of us in every situation, being able to remind us that yes. he's present. She's present with us, you know, to help yes. us in what's happening. Um, we're not alone in what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but, I know for a fact that I am still reaping the benefits of my mother and grandmother's prayers and my yeah. father's prayers. And my mother told me long after I was married how she and Sister Lottie Brooks from North Church <laughs> made it a mission to just pray for me every day. That was she was an older lady than my mother and who, my mother who was kind of mentoring my mother and and mm -hmm. they were praying for Janice every day. And uh, <laughs> and I still know those prayers are still carrying me through. Mm. And to see you all, Chelsea, 
like your mother was saying, to see you all walking in your spiritual truth and your relationship with the Lord. It's just, it's, it's, it's all a parent could ask for, I'm telling you. Mm. And I know when Joanne went through her situation with her brain tumor and I went through my breast cancer, the way the Lord helped us to go through that, we are praying and we believe it did set an example for you all to know that tr the God can bring you through mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. How you go through it, how the attitude you choose to go through your uh, your conflicts with or whatever you run into. And mine was going to be an attitude of praise. I'm going to praise my way through this. Right. And that's what my girls are going to see. And, and Joanne, I'm sure, had the same kind of um, resolve. And we're just so thankful that the, we're being able to see hmm. the fruit of that as we are still living the fruit of our parents' prayers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you say that, Aunt Janice. I, I was reading an article um, by uh, Carol Easley Allen and Gregory Allen. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll put the link below for other people to reference as well. It was, um, I believe, published in um, the National Institutes of Health about Black women and spirituality. Um, specifically Christian spirituality. And this is the quote I just wanted to kind of reference based on what you were just saying. It says, Christian spirituality among women of color tends to not be abstract, but deeply rooted in relationships and the community. Christian spirituality is viewed as an extension of the cross of Christ vertically through a recognition of God's love, justice, and mystery and a surrender to God's sovereignty and horizontally, through an extension of God's kingdom through compassion, sacrifice, and service in the world. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, isn't just some abstract, esoteric type of, I feel it type of experience. No, this is something that we actually feel and know tangibly through the things that happen both with each other and as God, you know, connects and works in us. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's just so important because I think sometimes it's easy when things are difficult to forget, but it's like, no, this can remind and continue to root and ground all of us as we go through a spiritual experience. And it went on to say in this article that it was even possible based on the outcomes that they were seeing for women to have better health, mm. literally to have better health because they were spiritually connected both with their community and with God that they knew was going to be able to help them, even if it meant they were lower social economic status, that mm -hmm. they had crazy, um, that they had crazy stressors that they were dealing with, um, that they were having a lot of challenges in the in the community socially. That spiritual connection, the Christian spiritual connection amongst women of color, um, Black, Mexican, Puerto Rican, really, really, really moved them in a direction that helped them to be able to have better coping skills than some other individuals who didn't have that. And that's why I feel that sisterhood is so important. Mm. Yes. It is It is so important to have a circle of, of friends, uh, a circle of, of women who understand like you understand, who uh, think like you think, who are willing to share and not mm. things within themselves. Oftentimes when we talk to each other, we find out we're going through the same things. And how, how, how awesome is it to be able to, um, you know, to talk about it and to, to, to help one another. It's, I, th I think sisterhood is just, it's just Very an yeah. awesome thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you love your spouse, you love your, 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 your partners. Um, but it's, it, it, it's also beneficial to have women, um, who think like you. Um, yeah. 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 Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what recent things that have been happening, whether in your local community or worldwide, have really inspired you recently? Um, I'm going to mention <laughs> that just happened this past week. This, I mean, I guess this is the most recent thing um, that happened. I read about uh, another educator, mm -hmm. <laughs> Opal Lee. I don't know if you all know who Opal Lee is, mm -mm. but she's a 94 year old woman. Okay. So this woman taught what? me you're never too old to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Opal Lee is um, a woman. She was born in Texas and <laughs> she's a civil rights leader. And she was one of the advocates for um, Juneteenth to become a federal holiday. Wow. 
Okay. Oh, yes. I remember reading. I read about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she was honored um, this past week by President Biden. She was invited to the White House um, for the uh, the different mm -hmm. ceremony. But this woman at 89 years old walked from Texas to D.C. Now, she wow. did literally walk. She tried to, but her doctors and her family and her friends told her mm, this is not a good idea. So what she did, she started off walking though. She went from Fort Worth, Texas to another city in Texas. I can't remember, but she picked out different cities in between um, Texas and, and here. And she decided to walk two and a half miles because of the two and a half years mm. that the enslaved people didn't realize that they were free. And in each, mm. city, she would walk the two and a half miles and then she would talk to people. Oh. And tell them how important it was to make this day a federal holiday. I was like, mm. I'm thinking about retiring. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, I'll just do whatever. Um, maybe I'll tutor, maybe I'll. But my word, at 89 years old, this woman took up this 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 um issue and decided to make a difference. Mm. Like you are never ever too old yeah. to um, to make a change in your community, and it's mm. not for her if, or for um, right. In Texas, it's for all of us. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I was really impressed by the decision that Naomi Osaka, Osaka mm. made to not do the interview when she was not feeling that her mental health was strong enough to do it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was, I thought that was really big. Um, she got a lot of flack for it, but she mm -hmm. stood her ground. And I'm, I'm so proud of that. She was taking control of her mental and physical health. Yeah. And as black women, we can all do better with that. Yeah. 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 Take care. That's uh, so true. No, go ahead, mommy. No, I was just going to say, I was thinking about um, Naomi Osaka as well. Um, and I think what her story tells me is that even though you're successful, even though you may, may have wealth, that doesn't free you from um, having to deal with weaknesses, yeah. issues, um, problems, maybe seeking professional help. Right, right, right. You're still, you're still a human. And yes. You still deal with with human things, you know. Um, and and I I applaud her for yeah. the decision that she made to um to resign or to withdraw from the U.S. I mean not the U.S. the French Open, mm -hmm. <laughs> the French Open, yeah. She and and she decided not to do Wimbledon. She said I'm going to spend time with my family and I'm just going to nurture myself and my family and friends. And she she's doing it at a young age. We're not going to read about, didn't have to read about her later that she was so in such a state mm -hmm. that something happened that, you know, she, she's took control of it. Yeah. Took control. Yeah. Of it. yeah. I look at the picture behind you, mommy, and think about um, <laughs> where things were four years ago. Um, and the challenges that many people who look like us were dealing with specifically women. And I, I look at the picture behind you and I see Amanda Gorman and the, the quote from her um, from her her um, poetry at the inauguration and and think about the impact of uh, Stacey, Stacey Abrams and I, I'm very much so into being active in terms of being a, a civil uh, civil servant and whatnot in that way but I think the recent things that have happened, around the election and, 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 and moving and mobilizing people, regardless of where you stand on various issues. I just, there were black women that were there. We were yeah. at the helm and have been at the helm of a lot of things moving forward, whether or not credit was given way back in the day or not. And it was interesting. I was watching um, the uh, Netflix special um, uh, in my mother's garden, I think it's called on, um, where it, it, they talk about how black women to what you were saying earlier on Janice, we have been taking care of other people forever. I think pretty much since our inception, they say in, when we went to South Africa that, um, you know, 
black women or black people are where everyone has come from. Um, yes. That's what they say. I'll mm-hmm. just go along with the, what they're saying. So um, if that's the case, then my goodness, from the inception of humanity, we've been really taking care of other people. And um, it, it is important for us to be able to, like um, Osaka and others, to be able to be really intentional about also taking care of ourselves. Just because mm-hmm. like I tell individuals that I work with all the time who are caregivers, it's hard to take care of other people if we're not taking care of ourselves intentionally, mm-hmm. you know, um, to be able to step aside to be able to take a break to be able to say I can't do that this time because I've already said yes to something else you right. know <laughs> um but yeah I think of you know those two women um younger and then a little bit older who really really have pushed a lot of things not just for their benefit but for a lot more people's benefit mm-hmm. and it's just wow it's like really exciting to be able to see not only them getting credit for it at this point um, but really seeing the benefits that are going to be much longer than any of us will be able to really, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one more lady. She, she's not recent. Uh-huh. No, we're near recent. <laughs> but we are living here. We are talking here because of her. And that's Harriet Tubman. Yes. I'm telling you, that was my girl. She, I mean, <laughs> no disrespect. She... First of all, when she was free, that wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what I want to be. I don't want to, once I get to whatever place, I don't want it to be enough. I want to constantly always be trying to bring somebody else along in some kind of way, whatever way. And then it goes back to that spirituality. Nobody can't tell me that God didn't talk to this lady. Absolutely. Definitely. Clearly. The things that she was able to accomplish as young as she was and as I don't know if she was frail, but from what they depict, she, you know, she wasn't a bodybuilder, but, you know, she and she was brave and courageous and the things that she was able to do. Mm. Amazing. Um, she is really someone that I admire. And then one more person. And that's Porsche, my daughter, Porsche. Um, I have watched her around here do some things and claim some things in the name of the Lord that have. I'm just so proud. She just encourages me. And the latest being when they were told to have, they were going back to school in person um, and she's the new assistant uh, AP. This is her first year as an assistant principal. And so it was upon them to, you know, to help get things ready. And the calls that she was fielding from the parents and the teachers, Mm. so many people that were very afraid initially when they were going back to school, very afraid. And so and she was trying her best to calm them down and they tell them that we have a plan. We have. But she said, this is this is not enough. Some, we got to do something else. Mm-hmm. And she said, I know what I'm going to do. But she couldn't do it under Montgomery County public school system. She had to do it on her own. And she patterned. We, we were talk, referencing the inaugural prayer breakfast that Biden had when the people from all faiths. I don't know if you watched that. That was just the most awesome when they had people from all walks of life and faith and denominations and religions, religion, religions pray at this prayer breakfast. So Porsche said, that's what I want to do for our school system. Not in the name of school, just Porsche just doing this. I'm going to see if I can reach out to people from different. And she gathered all faiths and and she recorded prayers Mm -hmm. for Montgomery County School public system teachers and staff and um, school workers and students and everyone, just that they would have a good school year, that their fears would be quelled, that they would be calm, there would be peace. And the, the responses she got with the people that were willing to pray and then to see the results. And just last week, we were both crying saying, Lord, it, you did it. You did what we asked you to do. There was no incidences, no, no, in her school system, in her particular school, nothing. It was just an answer to prayer. And I said, mm-hmm. now you have to go back and you same people, you're going to have to give God praise yeah. for hearing, answering your prayers. There are prayers in other languages and sign language and, for any faith, it was just beautiful. And um, I admire Porsche for um, her courage, for being courageous and stepping out and knowing and not afraid or ashamed to um, mm-hmm. call on the name of the Lord in this, in this situation. Yeah, no, I remember that on Genesis. That was amazing um, to be able to kind of see. And, and, and it, it is interesting being in environments where we know that um, that's something that, that it's a boundary or mm-hmm. a barrier at mm-hmm. times, um, and I say from time to time, you know, if if a patient or a client of mine gives me the 
please, I want to find out. I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> I, I know that to a certain extent, the human mindset or the human um, approach, it, it, it doesn't meet the mark. There's more that the spirit has to be able to give. And if it is helping a person feel comfortable, I remember I was dealing with an individual who was dealing with significant addiction and happened to unfortunately just kind of fall into a situation where uh, pain medication led to heroin. And I remember um, uh, this this person um, that I was dealing with saying that he was just so frustrated and really wanted to be able to get out of this cycle. You know, he was just saying, man, I, I just keep doing this and I don't want to. And I was like, wow, that's, I hear you. Um, I, I don't, I don't know that experience, but I know of someone who had an experience that was similar and he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, there's a guy who talked about constantly doing things that he didn't want to do. And (laughs) you know, the things that he wanted to do, he really couldn't do. (laughs) And he was like, really? Tell me more about it. And I was like, Uh well, if you're asking me, I'll tell you. (laughs) And I, and I pretty much told him, I said, you know, um, some people call it a higher being and some people call it something else, but he knew that he didn't have it within himself to be able to get and overcome whatever it was. And he, he said he was honest. He knew that this was going to be a thorn in his flesh. It was not going to be something that may ever go away, but his way to be able to cope and to deal with it was to be able to intentionally co- connect with, you know, the God Mm-hmm. That was bigger than him, that created him, that knew how to be able to get him through those situations. Mm-hmm. And I, I love, you know, we're having to be just, you know, use some finesse with um, approaching things. Um, but knowing at the end of the day, it's not for hurting a person, even mm-hmm. if our environment doesn't necessarily always endorse that. But if they ask, you know, being right. able to be open and share, like, this is another part of who I am. It's, a, it's probably the biggest part of who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I will willingly, willingly share that with you. Um, but it is nice to be able to kind of see those things happen while you're smiling. <laughs> no, I was just thinking that, you know, you had to kind of take the back door and, and introduce, <laughs> introduce your patient to um, basically who you wanted him to, to be introduced to. Um, but then sometimes, like at work, sometimes I, I get either I get a feeling or I guess it's the spirit telling me, Joanne, that person that's talking to you and sharing with you their issues, ask them if you want to pray, if, if they mm. want to pray for them. And when I've done that at work, they were like, oh, could you please mm. and reach out to me, hug me while I'm praying. And mm. I'm like, thank you, spirit. Thank you, God, for, you know, whispering in my ear to go ahead and pray for them, mm. you know? So sometimes you just have to listen, yeah. be open and listen and, and, and follow the, you know, follow right. the, the, the word. That's right. And, yeah. Because... Yeah. There are people out there who are begging for, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, they're begging for um, someone to show them an interest in a variety of ways. Yes. Right. right. So if, if you could talk to your younger self, I mean, we've talked about all these amazing gems that we've gotten from the women before us, from the parents before us, um, and you were able to talk to your younger self. What, what do you think you would have to say, given your own experience? <laughs> wow, so, something just popped into my head. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a line from a movie that Denzel Washington was in called <laughs> The Invaders. And um, that line is, do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. In other words, put in the work now mm-hmm. so that yeah. you can realize the goals and the dreams that you have set for yourself. It's not just going to fall out the sky. You've got to put some work in. And um, I remember, I think it was Nia's first year in, in college. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I can do this. I think she put it on social media. I don't know if I can do this. This is really difficult, whatever. And I put that that um, that line um, on the post in mm-hmm. on Facebook. I said, "Do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do, Nia." And she thanked me. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. 
girl now. <laughs> yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah. I like that, Joanne. Yeah, but if I if I had told myself that and, and encouraged myself when I was younger, I think there'd be some changes. I mean, I'm I'm happy with who I am and what I've achieved and what I've accomplished, but that's probably one thing I would have mm -hmm. done. I mean, I know that I I'm not gonna say regret because that's so strong. But, right. But there are times where I look back and I say, man, you could have done better with with that experience. Mm -hmm. um, like I had an opportunity to be fluent in Spanish mm -hmm. while I was in college, lived in a language dorm, fooled around, talked English when I wasn't supposed to be. And then what happens? <laughs> 10 years ago, I get hired at a school of a thousand children. 97% yeah. of them are what? Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Any of their parents? don't speak, speak English. What do I have to do? Use language link or, you know, get an interpreter. So I just think that um, that's one thing that I would have done. Mm -hmm. I, like that. I, like that. I, I too am, I'm, 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 I'm I think I, I know in fact, I'm where God would want me to be. I'm, I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm not willing to grow and I'm still not learning and doing things like, cause I certainly am. But I know what I would have told my younger self what I would tell my younger self is to develop or have help find some way or someone to help you to, to develop your creativity. Because mm. I see now so many things that I promise you, I thought of when I was younger that people are using every day that they weren't using then when it wasn't thought of in the latest being uh, a, a light in a purse, some kind of thing when you open. I used to always say, if I could open up my mother's purse and there would be a light in there, I could see what I need to get, whatever. But I'm telling you, there was there have been so many ideas and things that have come to my mind from, from a young child on up. And so, and I and I guess at that, you know, at that time growing up, there were certain things that we tracks that we were placed on. And a lot of this creativity, it wasn't at least not in, at least not in my you know circles wasn't encouraged as much because it was how are you going to make a living yeah. doing that or that kind of thing so just to develop my creativity mm -hmm. I think mine would be um <laughs> my mommy, mommy I know you're gonna laugh at this but it's okay to create your own path and own that's it <laughs> <laughs> but you did that Chelsea wait well, wait well, because sometimes that gives mommy anxiety about <laughs> about doing that, because sometimes I do it alone. Okay. Um, and I know sometimes that might not be um, probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's whatever it is in terms of the Holy Spirit guiding me into a, a journey that might be or look a little bit different. It's it's OK to follow that. It's OK mm -hmm. to be able to be accepting of that. And not that mommy and daddy didn't encourage that because I think they definitely were when they realized that I was interested in one thing and it might look different from what I initially had said. They were like, okay, well, all right, well, let's hunker down and get yeah. this done. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's given, it's given me a certain level of freedom to mm -hmm. be able to just trust the spirit that God is doing things in a way that is, it might look a little different from other people's experience and honestly, and that's okay. It's okay for it to look different from my sister or my cousin or my parents um, mm -hmm. because God has a very specific person, um, purpose rather for me as a person that Absolutely. he's created. And it's, it's okay for it to look different um, mm -hmm. because that means that maybe I'm connecting with somebody else who's also had that experience as well. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that would be the encouragement or, or advice that I would give myself um, if I were, you know, talking back to my younger self. And not to make my mom and dad so nervous about some of those things. Well, you just keep us on our knees. That <laughs> well, let me tell you. Yeah, I think I've been I've been on them for you with her for a minute, Chelsea. <laughs> but okay. But what I I'd like about you, Chelsea, I just never forget that one vacation we were on together. You said I'm wearing every piece of clothes that I brought, <laughs> and you changed. I don't know how many times a day, but you said. <laughs> I got this stuff and brought it for this vacation. And I'm going to wear it during this vacation. I said, well, that's Chelsea. Yep. That's our Chelsea. <laughs> when Charlene should ordering everything on the menu. Why not? You said, why not? We, we He paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's not it's not hurting anyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's so, not, uh, if yeah. anything, it's it's actually yeah. making more of maybe of a, a memorable experience. Uh, so yeah. that's that's okay too. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think about sharing things in preparation for the next generation? Like so the, things are so different with those who are being brought up now. And I I sound so old in saying that, but no, seriously, things are very different. What what do you mean? I mean, I think of like Hunter and Chloe and the world that they're growing up in okay. versus Amber and Porsche and Shalisha and Janelle and I, like, mm -hmm. it's very different. I mean, just talking about the internet that we watched come into be mm -hmm. and everything else that has connected to that. And, you know, I'm just, I don't know. What do you think in terms of like preparing them for giving them what our family members gave us that were of value? You, it is different when you put it that way. But one thing has not changed, and that is family and mm -hmm. human relationships. Mm -hmm. And if they can learn to connect with older people and to sit and listen to wisdom. I remember a story a um, long time ago. I think Ronnie may have shared it in a sermon or something like that, but I have used it. Anytime, anytime I had to speak impromptu or whatever, uh, give some words of encouragement is, is what I fall back on. It's about a little boy who went on an expedition to this cave and inside this cave, he was exploring whatever. And, um, and it was like jewels, all kind of different jewels and shiny, mm -hmm. just gems. And he was gathering and gathering. He said, Oh, this, I'm going to take this back to my village and we're going to be wealthy or whatever. And he was taking it, filling his pockets or whatever. And as he was leaving the cave, he heard a voice that said, take what you want, but don't forget the best. So then he looked at his stuff and put it back down and said, maybe this is not the best. Let me go gather some more. And he kept doing it a few times. And we finally thought he had what was the best. He left. And when he got out of the cave, all of his gems turned to ashes, turned to leaves. And what the moral of the story was saying, he should have taken the time to sit down and talk with that voice. Mm. Okay, what do you think is the best? Mm. What do you know that I don't know? So we can teach hunt, the Hunter and Chloe's and whoever to, to take time to mm -hmm. learn, listen and glean. You're going to make your own choice, but at least you'll have some kind of foundation or something, a point of reference to build it upon. And um, we just pray that, you know, they, you know, they follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. I would probably say um, self-care how it is important for you to take time to take, to care for yourself. Um, so often we get caught up with doing things for our, at our jobs, at home, we're burning the candle at both ends. We're just, we're just not taking the time to relax. We're, we're, we're getting the food quickly. We're, you know, we're not getting enough rest. We're not planning time for exercise. You know, I, I, I just, think that is important for us to um, eat healthy um, and just take care of, you know, take care of ourselves. Yeah. 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 yeah that's true. Yeah. Both are definitely needed. I, I know that it is different. Things feel faster. Things feel faster. And maybe yeah. it's because I'm an adult now. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but things just feel so much faster now than back in the day, um, I would say. But I think definitely those are things that can um, can definitely help. And this next generation um, that we pray will be able to have some, if not build on all the things that we've been blessed with to be able to have and raising the, you know, the men yeah. and women of tomorrow, really of today. Oh, but yeah. of today. <laughs> today, tomorrow. If, they, if, the, if those two things that we mentioned, if they could, because of the internet and all of that, you, you said that they're exposed to, they, the young people, they think that they already know hmm. because they can look it up or they can read about it, whatever. But there's nothing like personal experience. I mean, hmm. you don't they're not saying that they have to experience everything that somebody has experienced, but to talk with somebody and to learn how to navigate through things versus reading. I don't know. That is just something to me, that human connection. And um, you don't have health like Joanne said this. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all no good. So yeah, yeah. that health. Yeah. Well, I have to you know, an inter internet is not all bad either. Oh, oh no, oh, absolutely. Uh, and my thing is if you can <clears throat> use it and work 
smarter, not harder, then that frees up more time for you to take care of yourself. <laughs> and to spend time with other people. And spend yeah. time with other people. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's very, very true. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us. This was amazing. This was amazing. This definitely, in spite of the pandemic, still feels like after we've eaten lunch and we're just sitting around talking about the things that are just so important to us. And um, Except you didn't go up and get me another roll. I know. I didn't get a play of <laughs> hair. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so um, we're really excited. We're actually going to be um, continuing the conversation after um, just in a, a little bit of time, in a couple of minutes um, at um, on Clubhouse. So okay. those who have tuned in, please join us afterwards on Clubhouse. Remember, um, July 31st, um, we will be having a conversation with the um, Saturday Soul with the Black Liberation Movement with the first um, African-American legislator in the entire state of Idaho. We are so excited. We cannot wait to um, be able to talk more with um, Sheree Buckner Webb. Um, and we will see you then. But until then, have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us today. All right. Thank you. I am the liberation movement. 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 My name is Dr. Sidney Freeman Jr. And I am the executive director and founder of the Liberation Movement, which is a 501c3 organization that works with those who are liberated and seek to be liberated psychologically, socially, and spiritually through educational initiatives. To continue to provide the high quality programming, such as Saturday Soul, we need your support. Your consistent monthly investment in the movement will allow us to continue to expand on the excellent work that is already started, such as decolonizing the Black Mind curriculum that is already in development. So your gifts of any size uh, via Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal would be a blessing to the advancement of this ministry. Thank you in advance for supporting and joining the Liberation Movement. Please remember to join Sydney, me, and our special guest today on Clubhouse at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so we can dive deeper into today's topic. See you soon.